Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here, and today we've got some brand new changes for you guys coming in Season 5 to Battlefield 2042. So we've got a bunch of camera movement changes that are coming to both the regular sprint and the traversal sprint, and then there's a bunch of changes to Irish and his shootdown sentinel as well as Dozer, because I think Dozer, we can all agree, he's kind of been one of the lesser used specialists in the game, especially when you compare him to the other assault specialists, which are of course Sundance and McKay. Before we get started though, if you guys do enjoy the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. We are plodding along, making our way to 45,000 subscribers at the moment, so any love or help you guys can give me support really, I suppose that's the word I'm looking for, but as always, be uh, much appreciated. Okay, so let's begin with the camera movement changes here. So as I mentioned before, they are completely overhauling really the camera movement changes while sprinting normally and also using the tactical sprint. So they've added a sense of weight to make it feel like you're a soldier, give it a little bit more immersion, make it feel a little bit more physical as if you're a soldier actually moving through space, more similar to how it's been in previous Battlefield games. This was very dumbed down in Battlefield 2042, there really isn't a lot of sort of, uh, you know, shakiness I suppose you could say to the camera, so they've made a big pass in that regard and that is going to be coming in Season 5. So if you go under accessibility options, there will be a new option there called reduce camera motion. So if you don't like the new camera motion that they introduce into the game, you can turn this option off and it will essentially reset it back to the camera motion that we have at the moment pre-season 5. Obviously, if you're somebody who deals with anything like motion sickness, that might be something you want to look into there as well. So as they mentioned in the podcast here, the golden rules of an SPS camera is that wherever the camera is looking should be, of course, where your soldier is in space. You don't want that to be kind of misleading and think that you're somewhere you're actually not. So what they've actually done in this change is they've reduced the translation. So the translation is right and left, back, forwards, and up and down movement, but they've given the camera a bit more rotation. And actually by reducing that translation, it should mean now that what you see on screen is a little bit more true to where you actually are in the game. And that could be the reason that sometimes if you've ever felt like you die running behind the wall and you think, oh, it's the net code, you know, maybe it is the netcode, but it could also have been down to the camera in the game. So now hopefully with a little bit less translation, things should be a little bit more, more true to life, if you will. Now this will also vary depending on the weight of the weapon you'll be using, but overall it's going to make things a bit more immersive, less flat, and this is allegedly largely inspired by Battlefield 4. So they went back and they looked into a bunch of older Battlefield games, they also looked into other FPS titles, and the one that they kind of settled on and thought worked well was Battlefield 4's movement. So whilst it's not going to be a one-to-one -one Battlefield 4 camera movement system, it will now feel much more similar to that game. One final thing to note on this subject is that the higher your FOV is, the less of this movement you will see. So they develop their movement on the camera around an FOV of 55, which is the default FOV. So if you use an FOV of like 90, like I do, I'm probably not going to notice that much of a change. But if you play on console and you like playing at a lesser FOV, it's probably going to feel quite different to you. Obviously, we've only heard of it on a podcast, we haven't seen any video footage yet, but I do believe there is a dev blog coming detailing all of these upcoming changes on Wednesday, so hopefully then we should get a little snippet in a video of the movement. So that's coming in Season 5. Now next up, let's talk about the changes coming to Irish. The changes coming here are specifically to his shootdown sentinel gadget. So as you'll be familiar with, at the moment the way his gadget works is that you you plonk it down on the ground and it just starts shooting down projectiles all over the place instantaneously. There's no spool up time or anything like that. And it's honestly pretty good, especially in certain situations like if you've got a tank like, like a wildcat or a railgun tank tanking on a cliffside, you can put down two of these things, one on either side, and you're pretty much, I don't want to say invincible, but you guys know what I'm talking about. You're good to go. So they've introduced a new mechanic to his shootdown sentinel called states. And what this means is that the sentinel gadget is going to go through a number of different states depending on the situation that it's in. So when you put down the sentinel and you place it on the ground, it's going to turn into the booting state. And it's going to take one second before the gadget is actually armed and able to function. It will then transition into the searching state where it's actually searching for incoming projectiles to shoot down and as soon as it detects a projectile it will shoot it down and it will then enter the interception state 
for five seconds. Now, once those five seconds are up, it's then going to enter a cooldown for another 7.5 seconds. So obviously what this means is that the gadget is not going to be active all of the time anymore. And you're going to have a little mechanic to play around here and sort of bait out those charges. So if you've got an airburst, that's the example they used in, in, in the podcast here, you could fire your first round of the airburst, bait out the interception state for five seconds, wait five seconds, and then once you know that it's on cooldown, you can go in and hit the rest of the airbursts around that corner. Also, as I mentioned before, with vehicle players camping on hillsides and mountainsides and all that, this is definitely going to help a lot there when you're trying to take those guys down. Now, in addition to that, they've also done a visual and an audio pass. And on the visual side, it's going to be sort of similar to the way that APS works. So when the weapon is booting up, it's going to flash a white color. Then it's going to turn to a solid color, which means that the weapon is primed and armed. And then when it enters that interception state, you will see a flashing color. Now, the color actually depends on who places the gadget down. So if it's an enemy gadget, it will be red. If it's a friendly gadget, it will be blue. And if it's a squaddies gadget, then it's going to be green. Now, obviously, if you've changed the colors to like the colorblind colors and you've got different colors than the default ones, it will also change to those colors, I believe, as well. So it kind of depends what you've got in your settings there, but it should be pretty readable. They've also got a lot of audio coming for this as well. They didn't give us any audio snippets or anything like that in the podcast but apparently you will sort of familiarize yourself with those different audio cues, which will signal, you know, what sort of a state the gadget is in. And so you'll know presumably when you can attack or not. Now, as for counters to the gadget, I'm not really sure or too up to date on what the counters are at the moment, because I, I honestly never really run Irish, but the new counters are like hard counters to this gadget are going to be the EMP grenade. That is not going to be stopped by the Sentinel. So if you throw one of those around the corner, it's just going to outright destroy it or at least disable it c5 that will not be eaten by the gadget either and then finally tank shells so any of those three things there will be a direct hard counter to irish's shoot down sentinel so definitely some really nice changes there i think this makes a lot of sense it gives players an opportunity to play around the gadget if you're on the enemy side the attacking side let's say and if you're on the defending side and you're the one placing down the gadget it also kind of says okay you know it's on cooldown we better be wary if a grenade comes around that corner we're not protected anymore and you're kind of informed in that way as well Okay, moving on, let's talk about Dozer and the changes coming to him. So DICE's fantasy for Dozer was kind of that he should be that shield on the front lines, he should be the soldier that is pushing through front lines and, and breaking and to be the first one over and into enemy territory and that his teammates should back him up. But it's, it feels kind of unforgiving because at the moment you don't really get much for standing there in the line of fire um, taking damage as Dozer. So the first thing here is that there's a brand new XP event. So if you have your shield out as Dozer and you take damage from an enemy and then your teammates kill that enemy, you will now get a kill assist for that, even though you haven't done a single point of damage to that enemy. You're also going to be able to use your shield on a zip line to cover your allies. So this definitely makes me think of breakthrough exposure when you're going from objective to objective and you've got those straight zip lines across where you know, the enemies have like a straight shot line to shoot everybody there. That's going to be really powerful now, having a dozer come in the front and block all of those bullets with a the shield. They've also increased the movement, so you can now strafe left to right. You can also move front to back slightly faster. You can run faster. The animations have also been improved on a more smooth and natural, presumably when you're getting your shield out and whatnot. And they've also decided to cap the field of view at 70. So again, for those players who are on a lower field of view, they will kind of get the shield out. They wouldn't be able to see what is at the side of them and somebody could easily come around and flank them. So now if you're playing on a field of view anywhere between 55 and 69, when you whip out your shield, you will now have an FOV of 70 to allow you to see what is to the side of you. So even if you prefer to play with a field of view of 55, whenever you put that shield up, it's going to go up to 70 just to give you a little bit more peripheral vision. Now, in addition to that, they've also actually decided to nerf Dozer's reflecting ability a little bit. So when he's able to sort of rebound bullets back at an enemy player and kill them, as they said in the podcast, it was feeling a little bit too much like a lightsaber, a little bit too good. Um, they've added a bit more spread to that. So you might, you know, do damage to the enemy, but perhaps not outright just kill them instantaneously. And then finally here, they went over some of the direct counters to Dozer. So as some of you will know, incendiary grenades work really well. 
Concussion grenades work as well because he has difficulty moving fast when he has his shield out, so we might have to put the shield away to turn around and then you can kill him. But also, they've added a new animation where if Dozer has his shield out and he gets hit by either the M5 launcher or a tank shell, he will actually kind of absorb the impact on his shield, but he will move his shield away for like a second or two in an animation. So if somebody hits him with an M5, that will kind of weaken him and then allow them to switch to a primary or have a teammate come along and finish the job. So overall, some really nice changes here. It's really nice to see DICE dropping information every single week here on the run of Season 5. Of course, we don't really know what is going to be the actual sort of meaty content of Season 5 yet. So all of that stuff is still to come, which is super exciting. Yeah, it's just nice to see these changes coming along. You know, so far we've seen the squad management system, changes to specialists, and then a couple of weeks ago, of course, we had the vault weapon attachments and the skins. So really good to see DICE continuing to support the game and uh, get things done here. Some other big changes that will be coming in Season 5, of course, are to vehicles. And yesterday we were talking all about the changes coming to attack helicopters and some damage number system changes. So if you haven't watched that one, go and check that out. If you enjoyed the video, guys, like it. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content here. Thanks for spending some time with me, as always. And I'll see you guys in the next one.